whoa. Welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast, man. This your man, Aldo Nice. And it's your homie, Rod Smooth. And, um, you know, for the first time in in the history of the Best Friend Weekend Podcast, I want to say we got a uh, we got a special guest this week for you guys, man. I'm going to let that man um, introduce himself. Ha <laughs> ha, it's your boy, Scotty D, man. What up? Um, from live from Live House Media, man, a, um, a real live Houston club personality slash Houston street personality. We got D Scott in here, and um, yeah, yeah, we we've been teasing about this pod for a little while about having somebody in here to answer some questions that we need to answer. So, uh, it look like today's gonna be the day, Raj. You excited about that, man? Very excited about that, man. The man got a piece of paper. Out. That means he got a whole he got a whole <laughs> list of questions. It, man. Let's get it. I'm ready. So start shooting. Let me tell you what happened. We were, the boys don't well, hold on, but I, y'all, but you, you don't never say that about them guys on Sports Center. You know they always have their little piece of paper out. Nice. <laughs> you like Ad Van Verk. I, I, I feel you. Know. Like, Minus the Burke. <laughs> <laughs> um. So check it out. We was in Denver when that was two weeks ago when I was out there visiting, and um, uh, we went to the club that I'm the mayor of. It's called um, Gin Mill. I own Gin Mill. Shout out to Gin Mill. This podcast is brought to you by Gin Mill. <laughs> And uh, we sitting over there having a good time, having drinks. And all of a sudden, Rod, you could speak to this. They Some little beef started, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it was some tall white girls look like they played basketball. Beefing with some, some Hispanic girls. And I remember Roger tapping me on the shoulder and saying, oh, it's about to go down. You remember why it was about to go down? I'm going to refresh Because homegirl was putting... Yeah, I remember. Homegirl was putting. <laughs> homegirl had, trip. of course, every girl for some reason travels with a uh, with a. I don't know. We used to call them barrettes. Yeah, homegirl had the barrettes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what you mean she had a barrette? She had, you know, she had the little arm, like the little, you know, wristband, like the thing that go on your head. I don't know what you call it. ponytail. Girls call them ponytails. She had the ponytail. <laughs> she proceeds to wrap up her hair. I'm about to get it started, you know two things. No, I thank you for I thank you for getting some. She did not wrap her okay. own hair. It was a homegirl behind her wrapping her hair for her. Right. <laughs> You're right about that. So she wrapped that girl hair, and then they proceeded to beat them little white girls like they stole some, like just mm-hmm. beating the shit out of them in the middle of the club. Getting active. <laughs> it went down. <laughs> It was her and her niggas. Yeah, yeah. It dudes was punching. Uh, oh, like a bra. Yeah, but it was all in, beating in the on the white girl face. Yeah, like on the in outside the patio hmm? in the club. Patio, patio. Okay. And and I had no inclination to help. No, I wasn't gonna help anyone. It's not your place. <laughs> like like that wasn't at all about to happen. But the 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 phenomenon. That we were laughing about that night was that when we walked out of, uh, I mean, when after the the fracas happened, they broke it up, and the girl was sitting there, bleedy, busted face, fucked up, and the Hispanic girls just got up and just walked to the other side of the club, went like, to the ball, like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Savage, no twenty one. They went have drinks. I think they rolled up a blunt in Denver. You can do that, right? It was probably a white bar. And um, they just proceeded to have a good time. Everybody had a good time. And the club went on happening that night. And after that, we was like, we really got to have D. Scott on the podcast because we got to talk about the differences between white clubs and black clubs. Because I just don't envision that happening at any one of the establishments that you help to promote, man. Correct. Thanks. <laughs> Right. Did I, I guess you know? I guess I guess not. At least the first question. I mean, it's it, it's kind of jumping into it. But what would happen uh, at a black club or at a club that you you know? In you're general, at? I mean, I've never been to an establishment slash club slash anywhere where you can get in a fight and uh, proceed to enjoy your night after the fight <laughs> continues. Whether you're the one that's getting beat up or you're the one that was given the beating. So, um, yeah, man, uh, that's crazy. Like I said, like for uh, my experience, I mean. If you have a fight in one of my clubs, you get escorted out um, very nicely and quickly. Uh, like I said, along with whoever's with you and <laughs> whoever is, like I said, you're getting a fight with. And that's that. There's no coming back. May try again next week. But for that night, your night, your night is done. 
That's a Denver thing. Do y'all call the police usually, or do they just get to go home? Um, they just usually get, get home unless unless uh, somebody wants to press charges or it's like just that brutal. But for the most part, they go about their way. So this podcast is brought to you by people who fight in the club because, okay. um, as D. Scott just said, you probably get to go home and enjoy your night. Even if, like, if you want to sneak somebody in the club, you just get to go home. You know, right. you don't have to go to jail. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Too much paperwork. Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of the cats that um, follow us, we we got a, we got an audience from, uh, you know, from coast to coast right now. People, people um, tuning in. Nice. So the. The thing is, they might not know necessarily who you are, what you do. I, I did tell them that uh, Live House Media a little bit about that, but I'm just gonna. What would you What would you consider your job title? Tell me a little bit about what you do in Houston and kind of. And this This is a place where you could plug your businesses <laughs> if you want, man. Get it in. All right, man. Once again, man, I'm Scotty D, man, D Scott, man of many aliases. But uh, I'm a party promoter slash socialite slash uh, event planner. Whatever you want to call it, man. I'm that guy when you're trying to go out or, you know, party, nightlife, playing that 30th, 25th, 21st, bachelor party, bachelorette party, whatever it may be. I mean, pick your, pick your poison, but, you know, hit my line and I'll point you in the right direction if I can't assist you myself. Okay. That's that. So you're an event promoter. Um, would you consider yourself like one of the top ones in Houston? I mean, I don't want to, you know, pat my own self on the back, pat, pat, but, you know. Uh, I, I I do my thing, and I've been doing my thing for a long time. Okay, I, the the reason I ask that is because you know I I I do some stuff where I do some teaching, I teach teachers, I do some cool stuff like that. And um, in everybody's profession, you got people who really do the stuff, and then you got people who kind of talk about doing the stuff. So like back where we from in Louisiana, we know a lot of cats who are like quote unquote event promoters slash club promoters who. Insert line here. Who don't really be making it happen like they say? I mean, what would you what would you consider the differences between somebody who say they do it and somebody who that's really what they do? Uh, the difference is, like you said, money, man, um, and 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 losses. As far as one can abstain a, a loss after ha- not having a good event. At the same time, I mean, if you if this is your profession, which is mine, I've been doing it for years. Actually, been doing this since college in Louisiana. Uh, and came back home and continued to do it. Uh, it's all about substance, man. All about uh, consistency. Providing something that someone wants to come to each and every, you know, every day or whatever, whenever your events are. Um, to to grasp that audience to support you day in and day out, and pay. So, like I said, I mean, I can't come to your job and ask for a service for free. So I don't expect you to come to my job and ask for a service for free. I mean, so. At the end of the day, you know, you got to slip that one in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I can't, I can't pay my bills with favor. So, I mean, and I've been doing this. So basically, don't for a look for these guys at the door no more. I mean, you can hit, you can hit my phone anyway. when you at the door, but I mean, just know, I mean, hey, hey. This podcast buddy. is brought to brought to you by everybody who think they these guy friend. <laughs> You're not that bad friend. <laughs> I mean, nah, man, I got love for everybody, man. Like I said, I mean, I show love when uh, I can, but the most part, like I said, I have other partners in this business that I do. So therefore, I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't want to take money out their pocket, and I wouldn't want you taking money out my pocket as well. That make a bunch of sense. Uh, so, Rod, you had something else you just said. So I heard you say something about providing something, you know, an enjoyable experience for you know people that want to have a good time. How 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 do you enhance someone's good time? Because whenever I go out, I'm not thinking club promoter. I'm thinking I'm going to go to either my usual bar or I'm going to find something new. I don't know. Maybe elaborate on that for me. I want to know what's the need for D. Scott. Nah, this is, it's quite simple, man. The need is, like I said, uh, if you're one that in the city or from out of town or even in town that don't know what's going on, uh, hey, Hit my line, like, or you may, I may get a referral from someone that I threw an amazing party for that, you know, like, hey, my cousin's birthday coming up, hit D Scott up because he took care of me. Whether it was getting, getting my people in or making sure my section was good from the waitresses being on time, doing their job. It, it was an all around experience from a great DJ to great atmosphere, great club, great everything from getting out their car at valet to 
getting outside, getting in the club and after the club. So, I mean, it was a whole. And I respect that. Yeah, I respect that. It's like, so almost it's like a concierge service. Like, I really, 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 really like that. But it just seems like, you know, with Yelp and Google and whatnot, like, I guess it leads into my next question. I've never really met a white club promoter. I'm sure they got white club promoters, man. I know they do, but I've never met one of them. I don't know. Where they, they at? They they definitely do, but those those clubs that those white promoters are at do such high volume that that promoter is kind of like overshadowed by the club or the is like kind of trumped. Their their presence in a sense is 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 overpowered by the club. So their main purpose is okay. semi running running the door in a sense or like, you know, worrying about the whole experience before they get in the club. Whether like I said it's booking sections booking parties or, you know, having guest lists or whatever it may be, um, opposed to a black promoter, you know, that you, that's going to be the visual or the face of that night. You're going to, you know, turn to him more because you're going to see him. You're going to see that person before you see the club. So like, or you, you, you establish this person being there like, Hey, okay, this person's that. So he runs X, Y, and Z. I don't see white boys with little suits and stuff just uh, just running around in the club trying to trying to trying to trying to meet me at the door at white clubs though. So you said all that work takes place before we get there. Correct. <laughs> 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 I mean, but like I said, I mean, it's not a need for them. I mean, I can say it's not a need because if you go across the world to a Vegas or Miami, you're gonna see them front and center. Hmm. They're gonna be running the line or you know maybe even checking IDs. Whatever, whatever that club needs them to do, they're more of a worker for that club. Me, on the other hand, I'm more of a worker for myself and my brand and our brand, the Live House brand, which was uh, started by one of my close business partners. So that's that's more the difference between the black side and the white side, in a sense. If that makes sense. So, so that's why when you that's why when you outside um, in front of the club, that's why y'all, y'all hold a line and shit, so y'all can be seen. Like I need I need to know why you hold a line. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know clubs that still hold the line. Like oh, back, oh, back, well, I back in the uh, day, Diablo Loco probably about oh, two man. weeks ago. And uh, Diablo, shout out, maybe man. Bit. Diablo Thursdays. <laughs> so hold on, wait. Let me ask this because I don't really know. I never really had that experience. What you mean, hold the line? Like I the mean, club like has capacity. I mean, the club is not at capacity. Not I mean, you you pull up and it's literally half full ish at the club, but the line is around the corner down the block and I'm like, why well, I gotta wait in line? We can clearly all get in. Why do you not want my money right now? Why do you want me to wait? It Mr. Can, Scott, can you explain that? It can be numerous me? reasons, man. Like I mean, like I said, I I personally, you know, me and my people haven't held the line since like whew, man. Two weeks ago at the Diablo a long ago. time. Man. <laughs> <laughs> man, like Diablo's a must in itself. Diablo literally have lines to the street, man, because everybody wants to be in that spot. It's not so much that we're holding a line, but it takes a process for the doorman to check IDs, pat them down. They may have a discrepancy of paying or not having the right information up on their phone. So it's a, it's a, it's a process of things. Um, and it possibly could be that we could be at capacity. So by fire marshal laws, I mean, um, in club like capacity, uh, uh, regulations, It'd be like a one in one out type, that's type a, deal. That's a really is, good answer. Which is one person comes out the club, one person goes in the club. That's a really good answer. But I, and you know, actually, I was born at night. I just wasn't born last night, my nigga. Or like I two weeks like, ago. Yeah, I, two, I was born two weeks ago. Like <laughs> I, I'm gonna let you slide with that, but I don't necessarily. I'm not gonna necessarily buy. It's a very that politically one. correct. You, you you keep that on because I can hear it. He can hear it. we good. So. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, man. I was, we, I, I don't know if I'm gonna buy that one. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you skirt around. That I mean, answer. that's that's the truth, man. That's, <laughs> for real, Raj said he never okay. heard. Why have you never heard of a whole line, Raj? Because the clubs you go to don't have that. I don't like to wait in line. I'm gonna go to another club. Straight up. I don't like to if I can't call D Scott and D Scott can't get us in, or if I'm. All right, let me, know, let me ask this real quick. Let me ask this real quick. Has it ever been a time that you called this guy and he couldn't get you in? Or you had to wait in line? Personally, no. Oh, man. That, that has never happened where D. <laughs> Scott couldn't get Shout in out line. to D. Scott, man. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. This podcast is brought to you by D. Scott. Evidently. But, Evidently. Take it over, but man. But I've never, I've, never, I've never been in a situation, granted, I guess I'm privileged to kind of like be a part are. of the cool kids. Definitely. I've never been in a situation where I had to 
I had to like wait in line for longer than I was willing to wait in line for. I didn't have to do that many a times. Like for Xavier Homecoming last year, um, those guys in New Orleans who throw all the parties, um, they some pretty big club promoters because I think they're the only game in town. I can't remember their name right off, but uh, shout out um, Greg and them. Yeah. I fool with them. Yeah, yeah. We've done a couple of day they, breaks with them. Yeah, yeah. Last definitely. one of the masquerade, <laughs> breaking numbers. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they they are notorious for holding a line. Even if you buy a section, they got you out there for an hour. I don't understand it, but it, it's got to be a tactic. I, but you know, I would never be there. Yeah, and now me and my homeboys used to always kind of say this logic that I, I make too much money to wait in line. Make hey, makes sense. So we end up paying more money to skip line. So I guess at the end of the day, we giving them what they want. In that regard, but that's probably why. Well, this, well, I'm, a, I'm you know, against that's, that's the reason I'm against why they that make, method. Um, they make, yeah, they make. Um, you know, they only they only make like forty PlayStation fours. Whenever the PlayStation five come out, they're only gonna make forty of them. So I guess to create demand. So I'm guessing that's what club promoters and black clubs do. They well, just create demand. So niggas are dig deeper deeper into their pockets. Uh, like like I'm I'm personally against the holding line. Like you said, like because you're providing a service. So if you if you, for example, like you said, pull up to the club and you act that max of waiting in line, you're going to leave. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't want that that individual, especially if they know me, to leave. Because like I said, I'm losing and they lose. They, they're losing out on experience of that night. And I'm losing out on on providing that experience and uh, monetary uh, that they're going to pay. So, I mean, I, like I said, me personally, I'm, I've, I haven't held the line in years. And like I said, I mean, it was, the only tactic is to make it seem like the club is popping. But like I said, I mean... The the clubs I have, I, there's no need to do that. Common sense, so therefore, you know, my club is popping. But, I mean, yeah, I, I don't do the whole... Speaking of paying, Raj, I know you had some other questions about Come um, on, talk these to pay me. rates. <laughs> oh, I'm 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 licking my chopsticks this one. Uh-oh. Um, I mean, and it's all got to do with money, I guess. But whatever, let's go. Let's start with, with question number one. <laughs> Generally... <laughs> Generally, this nigga still on question one. Right. I'm sorry, white clubs don't charge okay. to get in. No cover charge. It's free. Just walk in there and you drink as much as you want. Why do black clubs charge at the door? Because it's not our club. One. So therefore, if it's a white club that is a, is a free, it's a free club. Meaning that business owner owns that club, so he's going to benefit or make profit off the bar, and that's his sole reason of opening. So the volume that they're going to push through that bar is beneficial to him because that keeps his establishment open. Generally, when a black promoter or promoters have a night, they only have that night at that club. So they don't own that club. So one, they're either paying a fee to have that club or two, that's the only way they make money is the door and then the club makes money off the bar. In 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 certain circumstances, y'all get fifty fifty on a bar or nothing. In in certain circumstances, the the the, the the may get a percentage of the bar sales starting from zero to whatever is agreed upon the owner, and uh, it goes from there. But generally, you're not gonna get fifty fifty. Do you do you feel like you don't want that part of the bar because niggas ain't gonna buy drinks? It just, it just is that just is that is that just kind of a thought? Because I've heard it before. I don't know. Is that really a thing? Uh. I mean, people buy drinks. I didn't say people. Uh, I said black people. Black people. I mean, it just varies. <laughs> it just varies in the establishment. Like for for one, uh, shameless plug. But uh, Diablo Loco, we have drink specials from seven to eleven. Three hour, you call it. This podcast right. brought to you by Carlos because he go there every week, uh, every every get, week to get the cheap drinks. The cheap drinks. <laughs> but you turn around if Carlos goes to Lumen, he's not going to get as many drinks because Lumen is a high volume in a higher area. So therefore, the drinks are going to be a little bit more expensive. If you get where I'm coming from, so Diablo Loco, a bar compared to Lumen, a nightclub, you're going to spend less at Lumen because the drinks are more expensive. So, which one would you prefer to have a piece of the um, bar at, at, like a Lumen or at a um, at a Diablo? See, it's like a it's like a double edged sword because Lumen, those high price high price drinks are still going to get bought mm. along with those high price bottles. And you know, and if they buy Diablo, bottles, that count as part of the bar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that called revenue mm-hmm. sales? Possibly. There you go. <laughs> Rod, you're looking at him crazy, <laughs> Rod. <laughs> Next Thank question. You, no, 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 no. I com- okay. completely accept that. I, 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 I accept that answer. Um, 
So when I go to the bar, when I when I finally <laughs> get over the fact that I have Still, to pay to get in, one. whatever, I'll do it. Or, or I'll call D. Scott. But right. D. Scott's no longer providing free entry. We at a black um, club still, right? We're still at the black club. Come on, okay. Walk uh, up, walk up, talk to me. When I go me. to order a drink, because I'm so used to going to like mixed clubs and, you know, white clubs. Uh, when I go to the white club, I feel like the drinks or the cups are way bigger. Why notoriously are the cups smaller at a black club? A I mean, souvenir I guess glass. Really, that's not really, I'm just. I guess I'm making more of an observation because I know what the answer is going to be. Let, let me see. Let me see if I, I get this observation. Let me see if I get this observation on the head real quick. One, meaning if you're going to some of those mixed clubs, it's generally a a bar, not a club. In a sense. Yeah, and, and I knew you so, was gonna say that. So so therefore <laughs> that black club or black promoter, which is at that club, is more of a club. So it's gonna be like a glass or you know, those pours are gonna be measured to a T because once again it's a club, not a bar. <laughs> right? No, no, no. I um I one hundred percent agree with you. I guess I've never been to a black bar before. But I've been to some black clubs. You have been to a black, black bar many a times with us. What what bar? Prospect Park, you came to like Scott Gertner's back in the day. Swagger. I, I feel like I paid to get in. <laughs> and a, and the cup was small. <laughs> the cup was small. The cup was small. Yeah, you're right though. You're not making that up. He, he, I had to get in the cup was small. Yeah, were, the, were, right. the, were those still in our black establishments? Now those are those. <laughs> those are not black owned. Those yeah, so okay. the, the club was kind of small. But what about that straw, Rod? The straw be kind of small too. But every <laughs> once in a while, you get a you get a nice size straw. But I get it. You got a smaller cup, a smaller straw. But I, but when I go to when I go to the, the the club or even a bar, when I go to a bar and they pour up my drink, it's usually kind of arbitrary about how much alcohol I'm gonna get in my cup. That little measuring cup only pisses me off. Yeah. I I wanna I wanna take this time for anybody that owns a club or is a bartender. That little bit of, that little bit of tin cup pisses me off. Cut that shit off. Bad. How Cut like how off. bad? <laughs> Bad enough for me to go to another establishment. Oh, <laughs> for me to bad. leave the club, they pull the tin, the tin cup out. I'm going somewhere. You know else. what? You know what pissed me off when the when the um, waitress behind the thing pull out the little the little long bottle opener shit. I don't like I don't like the long bottle opener. It bothered me. It feel like she doing too much. Cutting. That's just my that's a pet peeve of mine. I don't I don't mind the bottle opener. I just don't like the little tin cup. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> let my you, bar, I'm glad I'm let my bartenders right know to look, look out for you. You mentioned something, Raj, that I'm gonna jump in on right quick. He said, um, anytime you go to a mixed club slash white club, we were talking about this, and we gonna call this episode like black clubs versus white clubs or some shit because that's 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 the name that's gonna draw the crowd. Perfect. But there is really no diversity in black clubs. Why, when we go to a quote unquote white club, is White folks, Hispanic folks, Mexican, I mean, what Mexican folks are Hispanic folks, but Asian people and a couple of the sprinkled in Negroes like right. Roger. Right. Shout out to Roger. And, um, it, it's a diverse I don't crowd. Know any Negroes. <laughs> <laughs> Why are black people so tall? Cause they're Negroes. But, um, it's like, <laughs> but a black club, I mean, you might see that one night rider, the one little black, ch- white chick who only, um, smash black dudes and, like the one little Asian who do the same, and the and the one white boy they brought from work, and then the one white boy with the gold teeth. So it's like five people who not black in there. Okay. Cutting, what what do you what do you contribute that lack of diversity in in your establishments for, man? Because 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 we're not friendly, man. As a race, man. <laughs> <laughs> black people are so not friendly, nah, but, not, but nah, like I mean, we're not welcoming as other races. I would say. I mean, that's that'd be the politically correct answer. I mean, uh, white people they love our culture. You now, uh, uh, all races love our culture, love our background, music, etc. And it's just like someone they see that token black guy in the club. It's like, yay, man! They befriend us. We have a good time. They buying rounds or drinks. In the tall glasses for my boy Raj. I mean, it's, it's, it's all fun. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, black establishments are predominantly black because, I mean, he, he just, we're not as friendly as them. I mean, I have never bought a white person in a, a drink in a black club because they white. What's up? What's up, Bob? Right. What you doing in here? And bought a white boy a drink. I have no, never I got a, done I 100% it. I'm clapping right now. I don't want to make too much noise because I sound stupid. Maybe I'll get you to turn the metronome back on. But, um, 
but that was the best answer you could have ever given. I mean, it's, it's just beautiful. the truth. You, you can speak by experience. Yeah, like, 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 I said, like, come on, like, have you ever bought that white person a drink in the club? <laughs> no. I but, mean, I bought a white person a drink in the club, but not just because I, I dance good or I, <laughs> right, I, good right, like the way I juke, right, the way I juke through the crowd. You, you know? know, the first night I was in Denver, this guy bought, um, you remember Raj, I went to the drink to, to the bar to buy drinks. A dude bought me two shots while I was sitting at the drink, at the bar. And then gave me his card and was like, y'all can come eat dinner at my um, yeah. restaurant tomorrow for free. Right. Like, just because he was like, I like, I just I fucking love your I style. I like your style. <laughs> right. They want, they want to be us. So bad. Get out. Now. <laughs> <laughs> they love it, man. But no, nah, I mean, that's, that's the honest truth. Like, for real. <laughs> Back to Roger's piece of the paper. <laughs> you know, you know. I actually got. I think D. Scott was a uh, was a perfect guest for my questions because uh, my number five was a question will develop, and uh, <laughs> no questions have developed. <laughs> no questions have developed because all my ans- all my my questions are answered. I'm I'm I actually have like a newfound respect for black clubs. I used to look a little down on them because I didn't want the small cup. I didn't want to p- pay at the door. Uh, the music's always way better. I mean, we everybody would admit to that that the music is always way better. True, true. At a black club. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> I guess if I'm supporting a black business, because um, I don't know if the implication was that black clubs need a, a club promoter to get seats in the, in the house. I don't know. Um, but I, if that's a black, if that's supporting black business, then that's what I'll do. I mean, yeah, um, but I don't want to go overboard, though, right? Well, I see you at Mint. You know, hey, shout out to Mint. I'll be at Mint this weekend. Okay, Just go to Mint and tell me how it is because I never went to Mint anytime I was. Um, what's the old girl name who used to work with y'all? Um, who's from Denver? Uh, Nikki. Nikki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last time I was about to go to Denver, I ran in with her and was like, "Hey, I'm going out to Denver. So where should I go?" And she right. was like, um, "Talking about head out to Mint. and she gave me a whole bunch of black clubs. And I was like, "Sure." When I got out there, I didn't want to go hang out with black people, though. I don't really like hanging out with black people like that. That's fine. But, um, and then I'm the militant one, right? Isn't that what everybody <laughs> says on this spot? I'm, I'm the I'm the Black Panther, but I don't really like going to black clubs like that. Yeah. I mean, when I do, I have a great time. I just... You're a confusing character. Well, I mean, I got to pay the part. And now I got to... And he's tell, and I got to pay to get in. But right. now that I know the social implications that's, of that's helping the community... Like black people now. Oh, man. <laughs> no, but, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's... I guess it's... It depends on the location, too. Like I said, like, when you're going out of town, like, I mean, for instance, if I'm, I travel a lot, so if I know that I we have a section in Miami Live or Dre's in Vegas or like He's that, not name dropping at all. We're paying, we're paying, <laughs> basically, you know, to to party with the mixed people, mixed mm-hmm. crowd, and we know what type of music is going to be, but we already know that from, you know, one experience and two, just knowing where we're at, location-wise. So, but even if I was in Houston... Like if I was to go out, I have a free night. Uh, most likely, I would go to a black establishment. Uh, just, ah, uh. I mean, and that's that's actually that's real because I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna sit up here and say it like like I feel any kind of differently. If me and my homeboys want to go, out, we look forward to going to your parties on like Facts. Labor Day and like Memorial Day, right. like those day parties. We get we get a little geeked up about that kind of thing. We're like, oh, these guys gonna have something cool. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Just on a regular Saturday, it's probably somebody's birthday when we're going to get out. Because like, we're not as young as we used to be. So we can't just True. be in the club like that. Four times a week. Yeah. I mean, a bar, like if the Saints are playing, I'll come to, I'll come to um, Diablo and like I'm going to sit down and watch the Saints at Diablo, even though I like to listen to the TV when the Saints play. But like, just kind of, we, we, we patronize the establishments and shit like that. But <laughs> I, I, I also may probably, uh, I guess, probably hit this on the head as well. The reason you were, Gravitate more towards the white establishments because of uh, your attire or dress. I mean, blackie, African Americans, Negroes, whatever you want to call it, don't like to put on clothes at times. So, therefore, those different establishments are free, yes, and don't have a dress code. So, you go as you are, or you know, you may be out throughout the day and don't feel like going home to, you know, shower, change, et cetera, et cetera. So, you can keep your shorts on and your and your J's, well, Converse, whatever you want. Well, I categorically disagree with that, though. I'm going to have to stop you there because I think that kind of sounds just a little foolish because 
when we started kind of going out in Midtown, we realized that and they, they used to have rules like in Rochester, Rochester, Bar Street, it's like City Bar. Your rules are different from the white people rules. Exactly. That's so, the point I'm getting at. So, for one, you shouldn't even want to continue to go there if obviously yeah. blatant, your pants are too baggy. Blatant, blatant uh, that they're you know, racist, which, you know, I mean, it, go, it goes with territory. At the same time, I mean, like I said, uh, I've been kicked out of way better places, so I wouldn't want to, <laughs> like I said, be a paying customer at a, at a place that I know I'm not wanted or accepted at. So I got one more question. Raj, Raj, Raj question list kind of said that um, you've exhausted most of the questions he had. I got like one more real question. And uh, this is the question. So we, we call this Best Friend Weekend, and um, it's a real dope name for a podcast. I would say this podcast is brought to you by Best Friend Weekend, but I mean, it is Best Friend Weekend. and uh, But we got we got our eyes towards bigger and better things okay and we're gonna we're gonna throw a best friend weekend one day so for best friends you you bring your best friend to best friend weekend and we party and it's gonna be some city we're gonna we're gonna rent out something we're gonna do something right sounds pretty dope my question is i'll be the promoter of that event i see all right my question is when i look at the flyers from um your parties that you promote okay sometimes it's like hey um James Harden is promoting this or um hosting. or Rotimi is hosting it. And I, in my mind I'm like, oh, they pay in Rotimi. They pay in James Harden. Okay. Then I think, oh, if it's a football player, they're probably not paying that dude because they got that helmets thing. Like you probably don't have to pay a football player because they probably just want the recognition. Unless they're like well known. Yeah. Like Odell Beckham, you pay him. Really? But um Delvin Bro, shout out to oh, Delvin Bro. Never mind. <laughs> 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 you can talk with later how you can pay Odell Beckham. <laughs> I don't want to pay him like that. <laughs> Boy, don't worry, it's coming. Odell's butt tattoos, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, so so some football players probably they might get in on the love and get on the flyer on the love, or are they paying you? But my question is, if it's just like Ashley and Lauren's birthday bash, they paying you to be on the flyer, or are you paying them? I mean, I know you're not paying them, but are they paying you? Well, uh, once again, uh, our services are definitely not free. So when it, whenever it comes to like an, a flyer or a hosting or whatever it may be, they're, they're getting paid somehow, whether it's on a homie discount or, you know, we're, we're, we're comping them alcohol. If it's a restaurant that we're at, like a Diablo, maybe a food tab. But if it's Joe Blow and... The East Side uh, dudes from Port Arthur, then of course they're just going to pay us to make them a flyer, unless they make their own flyer. But if, if they make their own flyer, you still going to um, promote Joe Blow and them? And no, they're, they're going to promote themselves. <laughs> We're just going to promote our night. Would Joe Blow them on the flyer? No, no, so, no, no. Uh, so that mean, so that means we could have a best friend weekend. We just got to make our own flyer. Raj, right? I was getting to like, that all point. We just make a flyer. <laughs> and pass it out and nah, yeah. Stop. I mean, listen, we could take care of y'all, man. I mean, best friend weekend, you know. In, in H Town, uh, he basically said we got to get somebody famous. So we got to. This podcast I, I, brought to you by Cody Ray. Man, I'm so have to get him to get Odell to do I'm, I'm so anti host, man. Like, you, you should get with my team. Like, anytime a host comes about, my team is like, what do you think? And they already know my answer because I just, to me, a host is like so, like, 2000s and something. But sometimes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where people come to the club, like, because this person's there. I've heard people like, do that before. Like, they want to go party with right. whomever. I, I think that's like, so When outdated. do you really ever party with that person? Right. But, I mean, this is just that, like, uh, I don't know who's hot right now. I mean, that's just that guys and girls want to go see. Like a Beyonce, maybe, or something like that. But at the that same time, like, or Jay Z. Like, that wasn't a good answer. I mean, I don't me know. I mean, it was really a good answer. Jay Z's pretty hot right now with the 444. Four, four, don't they want to go hang out with 21? 21, 21, 21. I mean, even even 21 is like, okay, you pay this you pay this guy a financial... No, I take it back. Let's do Drake. He just had okay, all Drake's weekend. always. Drake's always. He just had all weekend. So, let's pay Drake to come to our club. Uh, as a promoter, you're definitely not going to not gonna go home with uh, money in your pockets. Really? Because that fee is just so financial that you can't make that back. So and then what's he's going to even have him there. Exactly. So that's that's what that's the difference between the promoters that's doing it and promoters that's trying to make money. But okay, let me ask you a question. So if you got like a second tier um like celebrity who's cheaper of a walkthrough fee, 
but are you hoeing yourself at that point? And it's kind of like they got Drake, and now we got um, yeah. Now you just you just throwing up a hell. <laughs> we got little Kiki. Yeah, you throwing up a hell Mary, and it's still like <laughs> oh. <laughs> Y'all got a little low. <laughs> and it's still like, oh, all right, we got this guy. So, therefore, look, if you're if you uh, a person that goes out, you're looking like, okay, this club has Drake and they have little O. She's like, damn, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to pay that $100 to go see Drake <laughs> instead of the, the $60 to go see little O. You and know what I'm saying? I've heard niggas say this in verbatim. they like, man, them hoes ain't going to see little O. Them hoes going to see right. Drake. You're going to go where, where the females are going to be at. I mean, as a guy. You're not trying to go where all the guys at. Unless, I mean, unless that floats your body, I don't know. I mean, hey, hey man, I'm not judging. <laughs> More power to you, but I love women. So, and that and, and and that being said, I'm going to go party where a lot of women are be at. So, word to the wise. If Speaking anybody, of loving women. <laughs> you wanna, hey, I need to give a word to the wise before you talk about loving women. Word to the wise. If you ever see somebody with this very expensive um, person on their club fly, they probably ain't making money that night. Just we're gonna walk away with that from whoever that might be applicable for. Tough. Um I was gonna tell a little story to segue here. You was just gonna talk about women. Can I tell this little story? It's short, right? I swear, I know you ain't talked in a minute, but it's a real short story. When I first moved to Houston, I was with a homie and we went out downtown Houston. We pulled up at the bar at like one forty five. It was closing at two. It was stupid. We ran in Walked out. Which is a usual you do, but go ahead. Yeah. I mean, walked out. It was good. We leaving. All of a sudden, he's walking in the car with two girls. And I'm like, oh, wow. He pulled this off quick. And then I'm walking towards and I'm like, damn, they kind of bad. And then it was like, ding, 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 ding. Started going off in my head like, these chicks too bad to be leaving with my homeboy damn. after a five-minute conversation. So I start sizing them up. I'm just like, uh, the girls are your homeboy. <laughs> I start sizing up the girls and I'm like nah this ain't right he hop in the car with him and he like um, I'm not gonna go with the whole story long story short there was some transvestites mm. and um, mm. uh, he allegedly didn't smash them things but I just mm. gonna leave this story where it's at man <laughs> he mm. said he didn't but if he did then that's family business but I, like I, I don't, I I don't think he did it. I don't think I, he did if I was in the same if I was in the same position I would allegedly not smash two for the rest of my life. <laughs> allegedly. So, allegedly. Quote, unquote. Because you never know, you know? You never know what, you know, though. We was, so, obviously, well, this is what we're talking about. Nowadays, right? nowadays, they just take a hammer to that thing, Wait, you man, know, first invert of all, it, and it's, and it's nah. that monkey. What, 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 <laughs> you don't know? One, one thing about he it, you know. take a hammer to that thing, and it become a monkey. <laughs> one thing about it, man. As a man. <laughs> mashed potatoes. That, that, that. That that uh, is intrigued by the woman race. You know if it's a man or a woman. I got old. Sure. I mean, I mean, but hey, like I said, and whatever floats your boat. Some guys don't care, which is like I said, no, more power. No, cool. and, and you know what? That's nasty. That's nasty, people. And I, you know, I, I'm, I guess it's insensitive for me to say that's nasty. I don't agree with that. Is what I meant to say. But one one thing I want to tell you is knock on wood. <laughs> not literally. Not not. I mean, literally knock on wood. Like don't you know. Because you might find yourself knocking on wood one day. You, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. I, obviously, the, 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 the elephant in the room right now is that little Duvall interview. We've been tripping on that all day, like just laughing back and forth. So for those of y'all out there who might not know about what took place, Lil Duvall was on The Breakfast Club um, earlier this week or last week. I'm not sure when. And they asked him like if he if he ended up like smashing something that used to be a dude, like how would he feel about that? And he was like that he was like that person gonna die today. I'm like, yeah. killing him straight up. I'm going to jail. And um, <laughs> and he got shit load of backlash online. Like like that um, transvestites are getting no, killed. Was hashtags. At, yeah, a bunch of hashtags. But it was like they're getting killed. Any at hash, a, anytime you get hashtag, it's a cause. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, and it was like hashtag blackout breakfast club. It's all kind of shit. Because they was like, um, they're advocating killing um, transvestites. And transvestites actually get killed at like, and I, I just found out this week that you can't, like, trannies is a bad word. Like, trannies is like calling calling them, like, calling the dude fag or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. We don't use, we try not to use the word fag. Like, virtual like virtual it's the slur. same, it's a slur in that, in that same regard. I didn't know that. But they were like, they get killed more than like any other person population in black trannies black transvestites <laughs> even wow. 
Let's do it here. <laughs> I don't even think it's Vestite. I don't. Even, I think Vestite is pretty bad oh, to say. You probably say a big Vestite. Oh, oh, you think I'm saying the wrong word the whole time? Man, I don't I, think it's Vestite. I, don't I, know. I really wouldn't like I don't know. that. That tells you how naive I am to it. But it didn't. Uh, no, yeah, like that's like that's like if I bought else. a suit, a three piece suit, then I would want my I would want uh, to have my Vestite. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> now said uh, did, did, did uh, Bobby V just go through the same little, yeah they say Bobby v. thing too Chingy was smashing one back in the day oh man but you well, how would it? you feel if one of your friends uh, knowingly besides the, the situation like knowingly like you knew that that young lady used to be a dude and he was okay with that hey th- for example Rod oh no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I had, if I if I had a homie that used to be a dude, uh, that'd still be my homie. Like I mean, no, 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 no. no, no. Your homeboy was messing with uh, a girl, but they used to be a dude, and you knew that, and he knew that. How would that make you? feel? I think I would try to. I think if it was somebody else, like I'm a very, I'm an expert at minding my own business. But, what if, um, what if it was Big Al? If I, <laughs> best no, friend. Let's let's not. What if it was Big Al? Let's not let it be me. Let's let it be somebody else. But I'm cool okay. with that. Let's just say if it was. Let's say if it was Joe. If it was my friend Joe. Yeah, yeah, Joe, cool. If I found out Joe was messing with a dude, I'm sorry, a, a, I guess a female, I guess that used to be. It used to be Tyrone. Girl, you, now it's Teresa. I would, yeah, I would, I I would, honestly, I would learn to love it. I wouldn't want to be in that situation myself. So here's my question. Here's my rebuttal to you. Here's the question. Since the he putting he put you on the spot. Out, I, yeah, I'm pulling up on you, nigga. So look, <laughs> let's just say if I, D. Scott, I would hate to I would hate to to assume your count, uh, but we all grown ups here. So let's just say ten, I count on one hand. ten females ago. Ten females. Ten females ago. That's too many, but Gary. That's way more than I've ever been. Probably, probably had like five, four, three or four. Right, right. Let's say ten Come females on, ago, Christian man. Um, you you found out that that female. How about you use I the number you used earlier? Because it make it more. It, I think ten don't put right. it in perspective. Yeah, ten like is ten could have been like. Yeah, ten. If you don't been know like his life. Ten so, could have been whenever. Give him the real number. So thirty. Let's say thirty women ago. Wow. You found out that that thir- that thirty women, women ago that one, that female was used to be a dude. How would you feel? Uh. That's a long time ago. That's in 2015, 14. <laughs> nah, for, <laughs> <laughs> oh, for me that was that was that was 2001, man. Like, be a Christian, man. I mean, like I said, I mean, luckily I can count on one hand. But uh, in a scenario speaking, 30 females ago, uh, I don't know, man. Like, like I said, I mean, just the mannerisms that I I know people, man. I'm a people watcher by. Uh, by not night asking day. you, so man, therefore man. I I know these yeah. things, man. So I, it wouldn't come down to that. But he if it did, you if on, but if it did, <laughs> I would back. I, I ain't gonna say I would kill that person, but it would. It, I would definitely take it to my grave. One, if any, if just conversation happened, <laughs> let alone if anything sexual. You wouldn't tell it. You wouldn't tell this nah. to like the one person you tell shit to. Nah, I'm, I'm you taking. You have to tell somebody. I'm taking taking it six feet six feet under me. And like I said, that's, that's if they don't <laughs> make a six feet. I mean, I'm just saying. Because as one of those situations, I'll be outraged. Let me ask you. No, can I ask him a question, Raj, real, real quick? Of course you can. If that if that um, person who grew up a boy, like Roger said, took a hammer to that meat and mashed potato <laughs> that motherfucker down to, down to, down to some uh, to jobs and like... Like took that sack and balls and made it made a big fat clit out of it, right? Right. I mean, <laughs> made a big, some big, some big stupid lips, some big stupid, some big, some big, some big, some big lips on it. Yeah. And you can't. And them doctors is nice these but days, like, and you face, can't tell face and anything like. You, and and man, you oh didn't see some of those pictures where they try to get you online. And they're like, oh, then somebody actually is that's cute. And, 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 and they talk like, for real. Oh, that's, that's really a dude. And it, but they sound like a dude. My point is, if it's all of the stuff is together, and then you how don't I, really how know, I, how would I find out then? Like, let's say thirty ago, it comes out. Like now, now you used to mess with a thirty ago, but now she messing with um with with Lil Duval or Chingy or somebody or or, yeah. or whomever, and they go on TV like they mad with the chicken. You like, oh, I used to, <laughs> I used to smash that shit. <laughs> like, I kill myself. Nah, but uh, my question is really, is that? A woman, mm-hmm. or is that a man? That's it's it's still a man. 
it just get it just they just had some loot to get that surgery, man. I mean, yes. He just um, had some loot. <laughs> no, she just had had, that, had them funds, had money. It's, it's still a dude, said. man. That yeah. is what he said. That loot. Loot. Yeah, had that loot to, uh, to get it done, man. That's that's crazy, man. And I that loot. Oh man. So that's so all that to say. So okay, okay. I got you. Wouldn't tell anybody because it's a man. Uh, I think that's a woman. Angry? Would you find what would be your emotion? So you had to, you had to trick yourself and make. Angry? Hold on, you had to trick yourself to make you believe like, nah, it's a woman now, so therefore it's cool. No, I feel no. like that's a woman. Nah, I feel like once you did all that, nah, you're a woman, man. dog. Nah, dog. You got titties and so, you got so, a jug, so, you're so, a woman. So, Caitlin, it's a woman. <laughs> you hit? I didn't say I hit. <laughs> <laughs> he asked, Why he would you? That's a woman. Because she paid. I don't, I don't hit every she woman. she paid. <laughs> so, so you went over for my girl? That's different. She bought Oprah was born a woman. Caitlyn bought it too. That's, some people so, ask, oh, you find okay. Oprah attractive. Some ask you something. You find Oprah you attractive? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, you find Caitlyn Jenner attractive. Absolutely not. All right, but it's still a woman. Yeah, we two live women. in Trump's America. <laughs> they got true. citizens and they got naturalized citizens. <laughs> 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 Them trans, transgenders is naturalized women, dog. They they women. What, what if what if what if she was born with? Okay, I got one. What if they were born? What? Yeah, we're both. both. We're born both. But took one of them apart. I mean, took took one away, which is the penis. And now they just got the vagina. So is that a boy or girl? That's a woman every day. Well, I don't know. You see, so if you, at that point, you got a choice. You know, like, it's, it's I, I, I huh? probably wouldn't, but I might be okay with it. I'd have to talk to my mom about it. But what I'm saying, but like. That's the, the lies they should use though, right? Hey, I was born with both. That's what, <laughs> what, you <gotta> <laughs> That's what they should say. Well, you just got to come out with it. Like, man, look, this is what it was. All right, now, now I give me the opportunity to choose. But don't put that on me. Yeah, put me in a predicament. Now you're risking your life. Like you said, like most of them get, uh, you know, off. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know if you know, I don't know if you know what this stems from, like what the, what the conversation even stems from. I'm sure you do. But, um, in my opinion, and I think it's funny, like, I don't know, like maybe I'm sick and twisted, but I think that, um, the transgender the population part. community, huh? I said, I was just going with the second should, part. Should, <laughs> sick and should think, they should thank Lil Duval and um and President Trump for bringing light to their issues. Cause like, to me, you go be trans. Just make sure you let people know before you let them smash so you, that so you're you, trans. You agree with Trump with the uh, with the banning of? Uh, of I'm them? not saying that I I'm not I'm saying that I agree with it, and I don't really have an opinion because this isn't a politics podcast. <laughs> we try not to talk about politics. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I'm not gonna say that I agree or I disagree either way. I got you. But um, but I but I do understand that if Trump didn't say anything about it, no one would be talking about transgender people right now. If Lil Duval didn't answer the question because he tried to hold off, it's just so tempting to talk about that. Um, if he didn't say anything about it, no one would be talking. Why about would this. we? So they should, you know. Think about, thank them for that. Do Do you think that they want to be talked about? Of course. Hmm. Black people want to be talked about. I mean, all press, all press, all press is good press. To be talked about. So this is true. I saw a story like before all this happened, like two weeks ago, that that dude in uh, Mississippi, he was like an uh, army or navy officer or something, and he was messing with this chick, and she domed him, and then she found out he found out that was was a dude, and he stabbed her 119 times, killed her. Him, her, him, him. It still had, I think, still had the had the, uh, the male parts. And uh, the sister came to like his arraignment. He got forty years, and she said, like, I, it was some interesting stuff. She was like, "My child is gonna grow up without their uncle," mm-hmm. and um, and I, I really think you shouldn't have did that. And then this is what she said. This was crazy. She was like, "But if it happened the way you said it happened, I understand, right? But." I just really wish you wouldn't have killed my brother. And so let me tell you this. That's crazy. I don't, you, I don't know if you heard the, I don't know if you heard the Lil Duval, like what he said, but I completely, I, he I'm backed off the statement 99% the whole time. 99% agree with him. 99% agree <laughs> with she him. That you kill him? Because what he said is, Damn, is if that, if that, if that were to happen, there's no repercussions. There's no legal thing I can do. I can't say, hey judge, he, he's, I, I smashed him. <laughs> Not knowing, so send him to jail. So I'm gonna take ish matters into my own hands. I think we so, need to have so you, some sort of legal, legal, like you know, legal jargon about so that just, sort of so thing. You okay with you okay with that time then, right? With what? You okay with that time? Them calendars locked up, prison. 
No, no, no. I'm key. not saying that I would kill him. I would. That's the. That's why I said 99. percent So you cool with you cool with that man? So you actually came back and said, "What do? <laughs> Wait, which one is it, right? Writing right here. I mean, if you cool, if you cool <laughs> with him sucking you up, then that's that's on you, player. I mean, I'm Duvall not judging said, you. Lil Duval. Look what Duval said. He said <laughs> he, he accused the host of flipping his words, and he said, "I didn't say that I'm going to kill transgenders. I said if one did that to me." And they didn't tell me. I'm gonna be so mad. I'm probably gonna want to kill them. I'm not gonna. So how would be, you be? And I don't think that really there's anything <laughs> that would make me want to kill somebody. So when that happened to you, like, I would, how'd you feel about it? If it happened, if it happened to me, I would be very, very upset. I would contemplate on you. You don't know how you would react though person. until you put in that. Per- okay, so I in that situation. I, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't kill that person. But I think I'm it puts. A, it, I'm not a killer. I think it puts it. And you know what? You just hit it on the head, Raj. I think it puts this in a, like that same kind of perspective of, and I think I'm going to make this make sense for you. Like I've thought about this before. If something ever happened to like a close family member of mine, like you see this stuff on movies before, like a sister gets killed by like a crazy person or like somebody, a vindictive person kills your mother or whatever, you're going to want retribution in the, in the form of killing them. But I've thought about that before. And I've always said I wouldn't kill that person because I wouldn't want to, because the legal system is not going to protect me. They're not going to, they're not, they're going to make me go to jail. Right. But I definitely will beat the shit out of him. I'm going to, like, even if I'm in the courtroom, I'm going to jump over the thing and go put paws on him. And I'm going to get that contempt of court and I'm going to go do them 30 days or whatever it is. But I'm going to get my hands on him. So that's going to make sense. So I better. feel like in that, that little whole transvestite, transsexual he's, thing, he's I think I got to put my hands on him. That's, that's, that's what it is. I might not kill him, but, but, but I got to put my hands on him. You put your, your hands on him to the certain point that he dies from the blows and... No, he's not that from me blowing back. <laughs> I mean... And then what if they put you in jail for hitting a woman for domestic violence? <laughs> yeah, oh, they can switch it up on you like that. Oh, man, that's dirty. Greg Hardy, nigga. Oh, that's dirty. And I get a hate crime, huh? Domestic violence and, and a hate crime. crime. You're, going, you're going under the jail. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll be a Dallas it's cowboy, a very, huh? like It's a, it's it's a very complicated, very complicated matter. It's not... We got our, everyone will be in one of those predicaments, so... Good. <laughs> well, I don't either, and and that's why I'm telling you to be careful because you said, "Oh, I know people." I think I'm a really good reader of people, but I definitely think after a night of drinking, I am susceptible of <laughs> doing gay going acts. home with somebody that used to be a woman, and I would hope to God that that person would tell me. I mean, and if that's our message, if that's the the prevailing message from this podcast, that just be honest with somebody. If like, if you got herpes, like Usher, you just got to be honest with yourself, though, too. You know what I'm saying? If you like men, at the end of the day, you like men. Whether it, it it's not be, a man, though. You used to be a man or not. I mean, that's on you. Put that on the poll question, man. Ask these people out here. If you went through all that shit of mashing up the wood to mash potatoes, <laughs> then you would, you a woman now. You didn't earn it. You got to go beat up, then. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. I mean, somebody, yeah, some some men probably would be cool with it, you know. I mean, I guess if I wasn't, if I wasn't like on, like I think I am, or cool, or like I couldn't get no, I couldn't get females, you know. Right. Maybe I would, um, kind of, you know what I mean? Get your off, huh? I don't know. To tis his own, man. Yeah, I mean, would, but hey, because they always but be I just luxurious. Know, the, the question wasn't, would you be mad? I would be furious. Yeah, we all would be. I don't think there's a a man who considers himself a manly man who would walk away from a situation like that and not be like livid. That that exact situation, like, you know, last like last weekend, I'd be very upset. 30, 30 females ago, I would I would be angry for like ten minutes. <laughs> you and then you'd be cool because you got one off. And then I'd be then I'd be cool. He put it in context earlier when we was having this conversation, Raj, what you said, like if if you found out a woman had like a STD 30 women ago and she didn't tell you. You would probably be mad at her. Like, why would you have... I'd be, like, I'd be the same... Ma- uh, I, I think, think I'd be more same. mad at the STD chick for like not telling me. Cause. You'd be way more mad at the STD and it just... And, and well, let's let's talk about the level of STD. Something like, like, say she got herpes or she got oh, gangster. I'm furious. I'm way more mad at her than that dude. <laughs> <The gay> dude <laughs> than that dude you the, smashed. The gay dude, man. Absolutely. That's me that you hit or it gave you... <laughs> No, he catches in your mouth. He's not smashing in the butt because he's smashing in the in the poops because he got a poops. Doesn't no. matter though, man. He's still a dude, dog. So whatever he he's did still his making past, you put a so you'll take just because so he's doing smashing. Hold on, wait, hold on. you raw, dog. I mean, but so you'll take you'll take you'll take <laughs> that gangster over. No, 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 I didn't say that. I'm just saying, like, I was, I would be, I, I, I can't say I would be equally mad because I don't know. I would never be put in that position. 
first off, we th- we th- we're thinking, we're speaking hypothetically. <laughs> First off, so you know this is off the record, but anyway, <laughs> literally on the record. But no, like this I don't know. This is completely on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the the level of angry angry I would be to to both scenarios that I would literally have to be in that scenario to to react. That's like saying somebody kill you. Well, I know. That's somebody saying like somebody saying somebody kill your best friend. You don't know how angry you'll be at that mm-hmm. at that murderer until that happens. You know what I'm saying? You can't gauge or like or like in a fight, like back in the day when you were younger. I'm gonna do this and that in the fight, and the fight come. You can't do none of that, and and and, and then the fight. You like, damn, I could have did this, could have did that, or I plan to do this and that, and you didn't do it because you can't. Yeah, you I can't plan you. on you know that real life scenario. Yeah, that's like me. No, that's gay. like me asking you if you'd rather hit a home run or a triple. <laughs> I mean, but that triple is live because I mean, when you got no, when, I, when you got don't, wheels, don't justify a triple. You I want mean, a home run. I mean, when you got wheels, and then three, like you know, say most likely. You're gonna score. But I mean that home run is nice too, because you know you get to trot around bases, you know, do your thing. Shout out to the to the fans, to the to the crowd. So it's either or, man. I, and you get a run. Right. Like definitely. hundred percent. hundred percent. So one hundred percent my my life goes on normally. If I if I end up thirty dude thirty females ago hitting a dude. Yeah, but if I get that gangster thirty females ago with no dude, then my life I mean, doesn't go on the same. Magic magic made it. <laughs> magic got loot. <laughs> so I, hey. everybody in magic. Most most people don't game. They got they got they got to cure so these days, man. That's what they say. I, I, I like I, I don't know if I I think that's an interesting conversation because people kind of put that like gay people with with like having that gangster. I know they statistically probably have more of a chance, but I, I don't know. I think if I was them, I'd be more mad about that. That people automatically feeling like just because I'm gay, I got that gangster. Like I think I'd be mad about that kind of thing, but. I guess I, I guess uh, smashing dudes ain't really my mo. So yeah, not mine. <laughs> Believe that. So do y'all um, do y'all make them wait in the line outside the club? Do y'all make them um, hold the line for for transvestites? They're, they're treated as normal people because they are normal people. So as long as they pay, you get them in a the section. You gonna party in the section with them? No, I don't party. What if they don't have this special occasion? This is my birthday or New Year's. So if it's your birthday, you party in the section with transvestites. I, would, I don't know any, so they wouldn't be in my section. You wouldn't know them. What if they was all bad? Uh, once again, I, and they came to your club all and they turned up. All of my close right? friends party with me for my my party because uh, I'm not on like that, so I don't, you know, <laughs> have a group of people that follow me. Raj, you got anything so. else for this Negro man? Because it's a thousand degrees in Houston right now, man. Oh man. No, look, I don't wish any ill will or or anything. Thank like you. Have like to clean it up. We all gotta clean it up. For real. I don't wish any ill will. No, no, no. I was actually about to be very, very, very extra. Like I don't, but I, but you know, that man is very confident that he'll never be in that situation. I won't. And I don't wish that on you. I won't. Man. I don't wish that on Thank you. you but just don't be so confident. Be, be <laughs> humble. All right. You Appreciate you, K. Well, the whole thing is, is the whole thing is, is I'll never know. You know. I would never. I, I, I know. For well, the, the question was. The question was. Let's make a pack. Look, let's make a pack. If you Do find Scott. out, let's make a pack. I'm, I'm with the pack. Look, I'm with let's the pack. make a. Let's make a pack. Right. Let's make a pack right now. Okay. I'm not gonna tell nobody. Right. Just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> just tell just you. Just tell me if it happens to you. Tell me Bet. just so I can have the gratification of saying I told you so. But you would never have that gratification. It's never gonna happen. But I we can make that pack. But if it happens, and and I I, I want the same. Um, in return as well. I got you. I got you. Know you. I will tell you. You ain't got a, you ain't got a comment. Just text me. Hey, Scotty, man, I fucked up. So from now on, we only mess with women who got babies, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, look. Y'all appreciate y'all coming out and listening to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. Man, y'all give us some feedback. Let us know what y'all like this episode. Man, look, we're going we gonna to tag D. Scotty, man. Y'all follow that boy. And um, anytime you're in Houston, you know what he is. told you. He will let you know where the club is at, where the party is at, where the fun point. is at. Raj, next time you coming out here, we're going to get on the flyer. <laughs> we're going to weekend. Let's make it happen. I do I do have to say <laughs> that um, 100% we agree with um, trans folks are not jokes. At all. And um, uh, I will not boycott the Breakfast Club. That's something I don't, I won't do. Uh-uh. And, um, and uh-huh. we accept everybody on this podcast. Bingo. <laughs> no transgenders was hurt during the during the uh, the, the recording of this podcast. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs>